Hey y'all, doing fine, I hope. Uh, well now, it is day six here on 30 Days of Lurkst, and today we're featuring the solo from Between the Wheels from Rush's 1984 album, Grace Under Pressure. Now, after nearly 10 years of great to outstanding guitar rock and prog, heavy emphasis on the term guitar rock, the majority of the band's 80s output unfortunately became much more synthesizer heavy fare, beginning with the band's 1982 album Signals and carrying on like this for many, many more years. Uh, the result of this is that sadly we got much less of Alex Lifeson's great playing sitting front and center in the musical mix. I mean, he was still there, of course, and his incredible rhythm playing and songwriting still shone through. But as far as the guitars were concerned, well, the distortion was gone, for the most part. Uh, the amazing riffs were practically gone, and a heck of a lot of the soloing was gone as well. Now, I, I really can't imagine that this shift uh, in the band's musical direction sat very well with Alex Lifeson at the time, but I can't really say that for certain. Uh, I know that personally, I wouldn't be too happy uh, with this development as a uh, front and center guitar player in a hard rock band that had achieved so much success over the preceding years with this particular sound. But, uh, you know, it was the 80s, I suppose, and this synth-heavy sound was dirty at the time. But, uh, you know what? So was metal. Uh, you know, they certainly could have gone in that direction in an effort to still stay relevant throughout the 80s. But, uh, alas, uh, unfortunately, Getty went a, a bit synth-crazy and the band went hard in the other direction. You know, they were still making some great music and the complexity of their compositions was still there and they were still charting hits now and again on radio and MTV and whatnot. But frankly, uh, some of the excitement was gone with this new Rush sound, uh, at least for me. And to be fair, for a lot of other early Rush fans as well. But uh, really, just think of it though, as I just mentioned, can you imagine if Rush went hard the other way uh, and became heavier and more metal after moving pictures? Uh, I think that would have been fantastic, uh, taking their incredible talent and prog leanings and going head to head with the likes of Iron Maiden and Queensryche and Dream Theater and maybe a little later on Metallica and Tool. Uh, I would have loved to have seen that and I don't think that I would have been alone. Uh, however, However, as it stood at the time, I bailed on the band, uh, along with lots of other hard rockers and metalheads. Uh, everything had just gotten too uh, synth-driven and polished. But with that said, uh, the album Grace Under Pressure from 1984 was pretty much the last Rush album from that era that really grabbed my interest and held it for a while. Uh, I think that Grace Under Pressure was actually the last Rush album that I excitedly ran out and bought on the day it was released, with uh, the Rush's next uh, 10 to 15 years being pretty much lost on me with like Presto and, and Power Windows and all these albums. Uh, I did go back and revisit all these albums at a later point in my life, but, uh, you know, at the time, I just wanted this band to rock, and they no longer did, for the most part. Uh, regardless, Grace Under Pressure was a good album, uh, Red Sector A being a track that I especially liked a lot, After Image, Kid Gloves, Distant Early Warning, uh, Between the Wheels, the track we're looking at today, all fantastic cuts from this album. However, the writing was on the wall as far as the direction the band uh, were heading in at this point. And this album would pretty much mark the point where many of us would jump off the Rush ship and find our hard rock elsewhere. Uh, like I said, not a lot of guitars sitting very high in the mix on this album and not very many solos either, but there were a few. And the absolute highlight solo on this album is definitely from between the wheels. It is one of Alex's greatest, in my opinion. And not just in my opinion, mind you. Uh, in my search uh, for solos to learn and cover uh, here during Alex Lifeson Month that aren't the obvious choices, I turn to the internet to see uh, what are some other people's picks for favorite Alex Lifeson solos through the years that aren't the obvious ones. And uh, the solo from Between the Wheels kept showing up over and over again on these forums. It is a uh, 
great bloody solo. Really inventive and tightly constructed on Alex's part. Unlike, you know, say yesterday's solo to Tom Sawyer, which Alex uh, himself stated was pretty much a wing it uh, type of solo. This one obviously had much more thought put into it with regards to its composition. Now, of course, uh, that's taking zero, nothing away from the solo to Tom Sawyer because it's an incredible solo in its own right. Uh, it's just the difference between uh, a constructed, planned out type of solo and an improvised type of solo as the solo to Tom Sawyer apparently was. And uh, that is about enough chit chat here for today. Uh, that'll finish up day six here on 30 Days of Lurkst. Now, as always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, drop me a subscribe if you haven't done that already, as that would be awfully nice. Hit that notification bell so you know when I upload something new, and lately it's been every day of the week. Hope you're well out there in your little guitar corner of the world, wherever that may find you, and we will see you tomorrow. Cheers.